Hello, and welcome to Money Matters. My name is Michael Verrill, and I'm a director with the global accounting, tax, and consulting firm, RSM, formerly McGladdery in the U.S. RSM is the first choice advisor to businesses in the middle market. My role at McGladdery, or RSM, is working with business owners and executives to understand the needs of their business and connect them with the firm resources to help their businesses and companies reach their growth potential. I want to remind our viewers that uh, from time to time, financial issues relating to companies may be discussed on the show. These discussions are not and should not be viewed as financial advice. Moreover, since the program is pre recorded and shown at a later date, please keep in mind that the information may be dated. You should always check with your financial advisor before entering into any financial transaction. We have a question from one of our viewers tonight, Mary Thomas of Marion. Mary's question is, when seeking a new job, what are some good interviewing tips and skills that should be used? Uh, it's a great question, Mary. I received a piece of advice a long time ago that has always stuck with me, and I think this might be helpful. Dress for the job you want, not the job you currently have. I would also recommend being prepared. An interview is your chance to learn more about the company as much as it is for the company to learn about you. So do your research and have questions prepared before you interview. Um, also be sure to come across as, on, as authentic. Project your true self and the right opportunity will find you. Here's how to send your questions to Money Matters to be answered on a future broadcast. If your questions answered on Money Matters, please go to our website, money-matterstv.com. On our homepage, click on the banner on the right that says, Send Us Your Questions. While you're on our website, you can find information about our hosts and guests, as well as show notes and links about this show and past shows. Money Matters is also available as a podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, so you can listen to Money Matters while you're on the go. That website address, again, is money, M-O-N-E-Y, dash matters, M-A-T-T-E-R-S, T-V dot com. You may recognize me from previous episodes of Money Matters TV segments focused on life sciences and healthcare companies with co-hosts Charlie Huntington and Kim Ahatza. I'm pleased to be hosting a new segment focusing on building your business when owners and executives need to know to grow. We will talk to business owners who have grown their businesses and the resources they have turned to to help them scale. Tonight we have a perfect example of a growing company that also works with companies in growth mode. My guest tonight is Mark Izzo. Mark is the president and principal with HR consulting firm Converge HR Solutions and HR Train, which provides innovative and engaging e-learning solutions that focus on workplace issues. Mark, thank you for joining us tonight. Mike, thanks for having me. <clears throat> Mark, Mark is a local guy graduating uh, with both an undergraduate degree and an MBA degree from LaSalle University. After getting his MBA, he went to work for Inglis Foundation as the chief HR officer. After getting his MBA, he went to work, uh, he was in that role for seven years before stepping in as a chief administrative officer. After 11 years with Inglis, he left to start Converge HR Solutions. He currently lives in Berlin with his wife and two sons. Mark, very interesting story. Tell us about the transition from working for a large, well-known nonprofit to starting your own business. Well, it was quite a challenge. Um, looking back, uh, 2003, 2004, um, you know, starting out with out any clients um, with uh, really no established book of business, without any real infrastructure, I had sort of the passion that I thought that this business, this idea of HR outsourcing consulting for small to mid-sized businesses would, would be a workable solution, would be a viable business, um, but getting into it realizing that, uh, you know, uh, there wasn't anybody to handle IT, there wasn't anybody to handle uh, accounting, there wasn't anybody to handle sales, it was essentially me doing it all. Um, so that was the really biggest challenge was I had a hunch that this was a viable solution. Um, but not being an entrepreneur, 
uh, historically, it was a real wake-up call to realize what I needed to do to actually get, um, to get the business moving and get it off the ground. Great. Well, you certainly had to uh, become an entrepreneur very quickly. Pretty quickly. Tell us about uh, acquiring that first client or how that process worked to get the business off the ground. Well, given that I had a background in healthcare, um, I spent a lot of time networking with healthcare folks and folks that were centers of influence for healthcare folks. Uh, so people that were serving healthcare companies, people that worked within healthcare companies. And lo and behold, one of the folks that I networked with happened to be doing some work for a healthcare company and uh, the CEO mentioned in one of the meetings that they were looking for some HR uh, support. And so she was kind enough to introduce me, had a meeting or two, uh, did an assessment of needs and uh, understood the business, was able to speak the language, understood the employees, the fiscal issues, the regulatory issues and so forth, and so was able to get the business. Uh, glad to say they're still a client today, which uh, um, I'm very happy for, but they were my first and uh, certainly one of my proudest. Yeah, that's a great track record to be able to hold on to a client from the beginning. Yeah. So 2003, 2004, that first client to today, where, where are you today? How many employees do you have? Uh, talk a little bit about your current status. Sure. So 2004, you know, we're out on our own, pretty much working in a home office, developing a business, get a client, um, <clears throat> leverage that client to do some additional work, um, start to do more and more networking, et cetera. Fast forward to where we are today, uh, you know, we moved into an office in 2006, 2007, formally incorporated around that time. Uh, we're up to 10 employees. We have two companies now. Uh, we have two people that are in the business development uh, um, area, uh, a number of other consultants, uh, and uh, as, as you mentioned um, in the introduction, sort of uh, made an acquisition of a uh, e-learning uh, HR compliance uh, uh, company in August of this year. Okay. So we've uh, we've grown nicely, uh, without not without challenges and hurdles, but we're in a very good position. We believe uh, moving forward. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, lots of businesses fail in the early uh, early stages. There was there ever a time when you weren't sure if you were going to make it? or if you were rethinking the, the, the entrepreneurial spirit that had gotten you to leave the big uh, safe company? Well, um, yeah, that's a great question. And I'm sure it crosses the mind of, minds of every entrepreneur. Um, early on it was tough. Uh, it took a while to get that first client. Um, and um, there were uh, you know, some struggles in terms of being able to do all the work that was necessary to be done, plus, as I mentioned earlier, uh, doing IT work and other support work and, and uh, running to Staples to make the presentations and the copies and all that. Um, so scratching my head saying, you know, I'm having a lot of fun, but this is a big challenge. Uh, am, I, am I up to it? But we had this driving desire that this was a model that was going to last and we got a lot of positive feedback from clients and prospects that in our market space this was really needed. Uh, I will say probably to jump ahead just a little bit where it really got scary for me was when we started to bring on talent. So when I was running the business and running it out of my home office and doing it all myself, yes it was a struggle, uh, but it was me getting up every day uh, jumping out of bed early in the morning and sort of blazing a trail and getting some pretty good feedback. It's when you start to bring on talent and uh, are responsible for making payroll and making sure families are fed and have uh, insurance and so forth that that becomes a little bit, that's when the fright set in I would say. Does it get uh, ever get easier with additional hires that you make or is it still as scary as the first one? I would say for me personally, it has never gotten any easier. Right. We just went through an evaluative process within the last two months, maybe 60 days, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, made a decision to hire somebody. Uh, Going to bring that person on in January, mid January, but it didn't get any easier. Um, still thinking about the same things. Can you cover your cost structure? Uh, what's the return on the investment? 
Are you going to be able to engage the employee to stay and be able to support your clients? Uh, so there's all kinds of challenges, and I, I don't think they'll ever go away in my mind. I take it very seriously to be an employer. When you have people that are on your payroll and you're responsible for making sure that that check gets direct deposited and they have health coverage and so forth, I think that's an extremely, extremely heavy uh, uh, burden. Right. And so I don't take it lightly. Right. Well, that's great. That, uh, that, that's the uh, backbone of America, though, right? The sure. uh, entrepreneurs are willing to take the challenge build something that gives people jobs and opportunities. So yeah, absolutely. We I feel you for that. Well, thank you. Certainly. I'm proud, proud of it, yeah. uh, but doesn't make it any <laughs> less scary. Every right. day. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. So what is, was there a point in the business where you, obviously we talked about some of the doubts, right? Hey, this is hard. You're working. Is this ever going to work? You're getting good feedback. But what was the platform or turning point that you reached that you said, this is this is sustainable. I can really make this work and grow this. Um, I think a couple of things. One is the early days and sort of the hard work and getting a lot of the feedback that was positive from clients and from prospects. And then as we sort of grew that base, um, we had clients that actually would ask us for additional work and, and additional things and so we started to realize we were becoming you know advisors to the CEO and other executives and so we felt well that's 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 pretty good and then <clears throat> can't remember the date but we had one of our early clients who were doing consulting work for us a smaller business and there were all kinds of uh, uh, wild variations in billing so one month we did a whole bunch of work, we built them a lot of money, the next month we did a little bit of work, we built, and the client came to me and said, Mark, could you just give me a flat fee and handle everything HR for me? I don't really want to worry about that, I want to worry about my core business. And lo and behold, that was the HR outsourcing practice mm -hmm. beginning. And I think from then on we've seen very, very good market response. Um, from existing clients that we've converted from consulting clients to outsourcing clients plus all of the prospect opportunities we have so that 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 kind of and can't remember exactly the year Mike but that that was the they were the critical points where we thought we're on to something here we, we have to keep pushing right right that's great we think a lot in our terms of our businesses not pushing services on clients but pulling them by talking to clients understanding what they're looking for, their needs are. You might not be sure, right? But right. they're the ones in the business every day. So that's great. You're obviously doing that, listening to your clients, and there to service them with the need that they thought they had and, and growing your business with that. Yeah, one of the most important things I've learned is that it's really not about selling services. It really is about solving problems and being a great listener and also um, helping that client grow because that's really where you grow. You grow with that client's success and uh, try to instill that <clears throat> uh, that skill set mm -hmm. um, in all of our employees. It's not about selling the next widget. It really is about solving the next problem and listening real well and, 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 and asking many questions. Right. So, um, And it's you know hiring people that are juniors and fresh out of school, that's mm -hmm. something that they need to learn. Right. Uh, and it, but it's an important learning, and uh, um, I think it's, it's, it's helped our, in our success. We don't, we're not a type of firm that is out there pushing our services. Mm -hmm. where We have clients asking us for right. stuff, right. which is great. They're saying, I have this need, can you help? Or right. do you know someone who can yeah. help? And that's so, much more sustainable. I believe so. Yeah. So up until this year, you grew for the most part organically, right? Correct. Yeah. And so this year, though, you made a, an acquisition of a company or, or technology, right, to add a different service. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. So, yeah, Mike, in, in uh, August of this year, we, uh, we made an investment in an e-learning, online learning company, primarily focused on HR compliance. Uh, so if you're a company that has anywhere from 35 employees to 35,000 employees and you need to do regular 
uh, harassment prevention training, age discrimination prevention training, etc. You can buy those uh, courses um, online from us uh, very inexpensively and very efficiently because mm -hmm. we don't need to come to your offices to train people. You don't need to send people out to go get trained. It's all done online. Right. Uh, and we felt that that was a good fit for us at this point. Um, we had been studying technology for some time. We weren't exactly sure what area of focus we were going to be in as it relates to technology, but we knew in order to grow our business and provide more valuable services to clients, we were going to need to be in the technology space. Mm -hmm. And so this was an opportunity that came ab about in uh, early 2015 went through the due diligence process and eventually closed on that business as of the end of July and, and took it over and are now in the integration process of it, uh, rewriting some of the courses and, and so forth. So um, we're finding that our existing clients, the, the, the traditional converged clients, if you will, are very interested in it. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've had three clients that have already said please give us a proposal. We have people that we need to train. They're in different locations, so forth and so on. Right. And then with the new technology came existing clients. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, and we're serving a, a larger employee base with some of those clients through the e-learning capabilities that we don't necessarily serve through the HR outsourcing. Okay. So that will, in, in a sense, give you an opportunity to open some doors that maybe didn't uh, exist before with some different conversations? Or? Uh, absolutely. We're already talking with clients about wraparound services, so Converge typically didn't work with clients that were that large, but if we're doing HR compliance training, maybe they need a policy audit, maybe they need a compliance audit, maybe they need the training, maybe they need uh, wraparound uh, policy drafting, follow-up, et cetera. So we can add sort of the personal touch and professional services offering to the technology offering. Okay. So it gives us an opportunity to serve clients that we typically wouldn't, um, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't have served in the past. So grew organically, and I've made this acquisition to give you some additional services and open the door for clients maybe you wouldn't have talked to in the past. What, what else is in the future for you? Are there things in particular looking at? Is the growth from here going to be more organic? What, what is your strategy? Have you thought through that? Yeah, yeah, we have. We spent a lot of time talking about strategy, especially at a company of our size because we're still small and, uh, and, and, and you know, spend a lot of time planning and uh, talking strategy about the future. Um, in terms of uh, uh, growth plans, uh, a couple of things we have done. We, we brought on a business development person internally uh, so to help continue with organic growth. Uh, as I transition more to really being the CEO of, a, of an organization focusing on strategy and planning and financials and so forth, people development, I needed someone to take over that role. And so I was primarily responsible for it, and now we have somebody doing that. So that's sort of the organic, the organic growth side. And then in terms of the acquisition growth side, uh, we're aggressively right now looking at um, staffing opportunities, staffing companies. Um, that's a challenging space for us, uh, and it's one of the biggest headaches that CEOs have right now around talent acquisition and talent retention and talent development. And so um, we decided that we're leaving money on the table, so to speak, uh, by not being in that space. And frankly, more important than that, we're having to walk away from our existing clients and say, we really don't do that. Here's a solution for you. Mm -hmm. And our clients have come to trust us and want us to do that. And so right. we want to be a responsive to that. So that's one of the things we're looking at right now is potential acquisition of a staffing opportunity. And then I would say the second strategic opportunity we're looking at is back to technology again. Um, because technology has moved way downstream. Uh, cloud is available to pretty much anyone these days. Um, HR technology in our space with small to mid-sized clients was also almost non-existent or not very functional so just as recent as five years ago. Mm -hmm. Today there are standalone HRIS companies and there are payroll companies that have full robust end-to-end -end solutions. So we're looking at where do we 
play in that space? Are we acquiring? Are we partnering? What mm -hmm. are we doing there? So that's another area besides staffing that we're aggressively focused on to sort of round out our offering. Well, it sounds like you've got quite a bit on your plate. It a bit. It be exciting. Uh, it is exciting. work every day. It, it, is, it is exciting, yes. Let's uh, switch direction a little bit. Sure. Um, let's talk about some of the companies that you're working with. Um, obviously, the companies that are hiring you are probably adding people and have uh, some kind of growth uh, strategy themselves that they're employing. Um, I know as a firm, we provide uh, outsourced finance and accounting services to help businesses focus on their core function, and you're doing the same thing. Correct. That's a very good catalyst to help businesses grow if they don't have the distraction of focusing on things that aren't their core. Yeah, um, absolutely. Same, completely agree with what you said, and, and yes, it's, it's, uh, it's um, really our core focus is to work with those companies that are growth-oriented. CEOs that are interested in focusing on their business, their core business, but also interested in their culture and their people. Mm -hmm. So it's not sort of a mutually exclusive game. It really is, yeah, they want to grow, they want to grow their revenues, they want to grow their market share, et cetera, but they also know that they have to grow through the hard work of their talent and their people, and they need to have the right culture to do so. Um, so that's where we come in. We come in and, and basically handle uh, for a small to mid-sized company uh, their HR processes the same way um, they would be handled in a 5,000 employee company um, uh, from uh, everything from the, you know, the talent acquisition piece all the way through compliance, policies, procedures, handbooks, ex talent development, performance management, et cetera. Um, so yeah, we're we're thrilled to have numerous examples of clients that we have started with uh, several years ago that are signi were significantly smaller than they are today, mm -hmm. and we feel very proud about being part of that that growth um, and uh, you know uh, and of the services that we've offered to that owner to be able to have him or her focus on their core business and allow us to do the heavy lifting on the people side. That's great. Um, do you see a uh, trend in the tightening job market and companies more focus on developing talent? Um, what Talk a little bit about what companies are seeing or doing uh, as far as their people are concerned with, with that tightening, tightening job market. Yeah, it's really, really tough. Um, there was a study done last year, and um, I can't quote the specifics of it, but just generally, uh, I, I recall the outcome was that the, the question was asked of X number of CEOs of large, mid to large companies, mid-sized to large companies that, you know, what was the biggest issue that the CEO was facing? What kept him or her up at night? Mm -hmm. And it was talent acquisition and retention. Uh, and that continues to be the issue today. Um, we just spoke at a panel, a discussion recently. Uh, around that issue for small to mid-sized businesses where all the business owners were raising their hand and mm -hmm. saying essentially the same thing, that that's the biggest challenge that they have is trying to find the right people. Right. Um, so we're seeing, i.e., the discussion of the, the, the staffing acquisition, uh, the reason we're looking at that is simply because of this particular issue. We need to be positioned to be able to solve those problems mm -hmm. for our clients and for the market overall, but I don't see it going away. It's a very, very tight marketplace right now. People that are, and companies that are doing the right thing, uh, and meaning you know, paying their pe people appropriately with a good benefits package and a good culture and good values, uh, with exciting work and so forth, those people aren't moving. And so the people that are out there looking to add are really having to scramble to figure out where are we going to find the right people. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, we don't see that issue going away, and we want to be a bigger and bigger part of it. Do you have a, uh, a story or two you can share of a client who's really done it the right way and has been going through and building uh, up towards uh, successful growth? Oh, yeah. I mean, I have, uh, yeah, sure. I'm thinking of one in particular that, you know, when we started with this client, five years ago, maybe four years ago. They had 35 employees, um, and uh, you know they were probably in the 
20 million dollar 25 million dollar revenue size um, brought us in because they knew they were growing and they knew that uh, they um, that they were going to be growing they had significant growth plans and um, asked us to put in place the building block they wanted the foundations built from compliance to job descriptions to uh, just making sure that the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed relative to their people practices. And uh, we did that, and then we moved into management training and more sort of uh, uh, development work, and most recently worked with them on their senior leadership team, and we sit as an ad hoc part of their senior leadership team talking about people issues. And when we're doing our 2016 strategic planning with this company, HR, i.e. Converge, actually has plans as part of their organization. So mm -hmm. we have to deliver certain deliverables as part of that 2016 strategic planning process. Right. Now they're sitting north of 50 employees and probably right around $50 million mm -hmm. over a four to five year period of time. And we're again very proud that, and honored to be able to work with such a client who has such a vision uh, about what he and the company want to do, right. but also recognizes the value and and, ha and 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 necessity to have an infrastructure, a okay. people infrastructure. Great, great. Um, we've talked about a little bit about what growing companies are doing that you're working with, and you are there. Two things, I guess. One, maybe a piece of advice for entrepreneurs starting out, on of trying to think of a business or have an interest in starting a business if you have a piece of advice to them and then companies that are growing the whole idea of this segment is to give uh, nuggets of information to, to business owners and entrepreneurs and executives out there that are trying to take their business to the next level so kind of a two-fold question one the beginning piece and then one kind of industry piece that people should be thinking about well the beginning piece I'll take from the school of hard knocks and that is have a plan do a little bit more market research than I did, mm -hmm. um, but follow your gut and 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 you know follow what you're passionate about. But test that passion. Make sure that it's a viable passion. Make sure that it's market tested. Make sure that there are people out there that want it and see it as value, etc. And spend some time doing it, as opposed to my situation, which was much more. I think I can do this. I've been told I can do this. I think there's a market out there. Let's go jump in. Mm -hmm. So that would be my one piece of advice. In terms of a piece of advice for companies growing, um, um, I can't say enough about how important culture is and how important organizational values are and how important talent acquisition is and the alignment of that talent with those values and that culture because that really at the end of the day is the only differentiator you have. Other people can replicate your business, they can replicate your product, they can replicate your technology, they can't replicate your culture and they can't replicate your people working within your culture. Right. So that would be the biggest issue. I would talk to, a, to a, an entrepreneur who's on the verge of a real spike or a spurt in growth. Mm -hmm. That would be one thing that I would really, really focus on. That's great advice. I think culture uh, is the example of most of the great companies that you read about. Sure, it is today. Um, thanks a lot, Mark. This has been great. I enjoyed hearing your story. Hopefully uh, the listeners did as well. Uh, gave us a lot of uh, different perspectives on what's becoming a very successful career in a, in a phenomenal company that you've built. So Thank thanks you. for sharing that. Thank you, Mike. Thanks um, for having me. The, uh, the next guest is um, a Amy Anderson from CFO for Hire. She'll be on a future uh, broadcast. And also remind the viewers that uh, Money Matters is now available Audible podcast on iTunes. The video is also available on the YouTube, YouTube channel as well as our website. Thank you very much for joining us.